So this week what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the March live stream and to be fair I didn't expect anything much from it. I thought it was kind of going to be a little preview, some kind of pictures and graphics design of the calf and kind of a tour of the dungeon. It turned out to be a lot more than that and we got a lot more information, some information that I've been waiting to hear for fucking weeks if not months and a lot of other people have. But without rambling on I'll just jump right into the video now and get amongst it all. So to get right into it, Intrepid have internally just hit the milestone 4 goals and then they said they were moving on to Milestone 5. After that they moved on to talking about Alpha 2 and when we could possibly see a release and give us a fair bit of information there and I think this is something people have been waiting for and speculating on for a long fucking time, myself included. So what did they actually say? Well they said it's not years away however it's not right around the corner. They said this is due to needing to execute the product well due to these testing phases due to it all being made public. Stephen then noted how he'd made some missteps in when he had anticipated some of the testing phases to happen. Now we'd all speculated in March or sometime around now for the Alpha 2 drop and we based that not off a lot of pure bullshit speculation, we based that off what Stephen had actually said, you know we're going to see a ramp up in content. This was going back months and months because I follow the game consistently and it always has been a thing doing content and just talking in general and, and just reading stuff and he said there'd be a ramp up in content, we'd get you know, we'd start seeing the Tormar content we got that, we even got the Tormar reveal we got Unreal Engine 5, we got a character creator, we got so much information so much good drops and I mean there's many that I haven't even mentioned there and this was what we said we'd see leading up to the ramp up to Alpha 2 and then we get spot testing. So we got everything Steven had said we were gonna get so everyone presumed that Alpha 2 was around the corner we got told it was only gonna be a little chunk only a little snipper and then obviously we'd get more in pieces so you won't just get all of Alpha 2 and I know Steven said we're gonna get all of Alpha 2 but originally going off what was previously said it was actually a snipper small part of it we wouldn't get everything at once and then more would be added and we potentially get wipes. That was what was stated to be a fact. Now I am seeing other people coming out with information that you know they've read and seen that we're getting it all at launch. Now I still don't believe we're going to get all of Alpha 2 at launch. I still think it's going to be done in segments and I think maybe you overestimated what his development team could and how fast they could do things. I think it's a good thing that they delayed it. It doesn't really bother me but what I want to see is the people who have paid Alpha 2 and put that amount of money into the game that we do get a good testing phase a minimum of at least six to eight month in game alpha 2 if not longer even if it is perfect now to get that i don't believe you need to knock it back a year or two year to get to that stage because it's already been in development long enough and i hope steven doesn't become too critical of himself or his game or the studio or devs because people are always going to shit in it so i don't want him keeping pushing it back and pushing it back it's got to be perfect when have you ever seen a perfect alpha 2 it will not be perfect and people will shit in it regardless of what he does so my point is take the time you need to make it polished playable and test ready but don't drag it out to the point where you're treating this as not an alpha 2 and an actual game launch now i'm not saying he's gonna but sometimes it does feel that way that being said he did say he was going to try and get people into the game as fast as possible as soon as he could he just wants everything in order which is perfectly fine but that's just my two cents and i do think he'll stick to his word now they said the plan for testing was late this year going into early next year starting with spot testing with the phoenix initiative members first then the alpha 1 testers and Ending with Alpha 2 members coming in. They're not striving for Alpha 2 to be perfect, but they do want to have the core loop prepared. However, they do want the game to be perfect for launch as you only really get one stab at it, is what they said. Now, honestly, I don't think that's going to happen, and I think to try and make the game perfect at launch is fairly pointless now make it as good as you can but to use the word perfect at launch it's never ever gonna happen there's nothing i've ever witnessed in life in real life in game that's perfect uh, i suppose you could say it's in the eye of the beholder but trust me a game this complex with this many systems isn't going to be perfect and when you see things like perfect for launch he's putting his team and his self on the line there because people are going to say you said this would be perfect what about this this and this he shouldn't be saying things like this he should probably just say i'll make it as best as i can as as you know functional as I can and as bug free as I can 
because you are definitely not going to get a perfect launch. It's not possible. I mean, fucking hell, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm just being logical here. And I think sometimes when he gets a bit of heat, it's because of stuff like that that he's mentioned. Not that I care, but a lot of people will swear that, manipulate them wordings there, uh, and they'll use it against him when they spit the dummy out and so. Now, for the people that maybe don't watch my videos or other videos, we kind of already knew this. We knew even more than this, but I think this was more aimed at maybe newcomers coming in, so saying this is what you're actually getting with Alpha 2, because it isn't really like many other Alpha 2s. It's more like an early access, it's really going to be some great content and it's definitely worth the money I paid in and I, I believe other people paid in. So it was good to see him relay that information and maybe newcomers that don't know as much about the testing phase. There was also talks about making a documentary of how Ashes was made once the game is out, as all sessions internally have been filmed, which would give a major look into how MMOs are made. A full on proper documentary like this, I would personally be interested, maybe it's not for everyone, but I think it's nice that he's logged his journey and we could see a bigger insight to the game. Not so much now that people will be interested, but when this game does blow up in its little niche community, or big niche community I suppose, this is going to be good to go alongside that. Now heading on to what we actually see, in the Tower of Carthen preview was next, and was both a law showcase and a system showcase, and in it they showed off the story arc system. The story arc system can change the world around you to reflect the chapters and paths of stories that are playing out. These are chosen by your activity, your player activity. In the video we got to see that Carthen, in its non-active and corrupt state, the story arcs will affect the environment. Stephen noted how the light and materials was still a work in progress, so bear that in mind, they are going to change, they are going to get better, but all in all, it looked fairly fucking cool. Joining Stephen in the video was Scott, the senior designer, and also the designer who had been working on the narrative for the Tower of the Carthen story arc. Amy, one of the designers who created some of the quests that were featured in Alpha 1, like the Lost Pages quest, and finally was Jeremy, another of the senior designers. Story arcs are not procedurally generated, they're all written by the designers, from the NPCs to the quests, the monsters, to the dialogue and the narrative beats. They will enter the world dynamically dependent on the state of the world and how the players have built it up, such as specific nodes being built up, the race that controls a node and much more, so obviously we know that affects the design and the landscape and, and how buildings look and a bunch of other things and they were kind of elaborating more onto that. There will be no quest subs in the game due to the way the world and no system work, they wanted content to be in the world that made sense for that specific server because each server tells its own story and will be vastly different from other servers people are playing on. We got to see how the environment changed when the chapter Blood Still Dew became active. The story arc is told in four chapters as they ran down you could see the bridge moving to allow access to the tower. They then talked a little bit about the Tower of Carth and Law and if you want to know more about that you can check out my last livestream video which goes a bit deeper into the law of the Tower of Carthen and kind of what's going on there. This area is corrupt due to Lord and Mon's use of blood magic as any use of the magic creates the corrupt in the caster and can bleed into the environment. As mentioned before, the story arc is told over four chapters and will update spawns and quest givers and change what quests are available. You can progress the quests of the chapter at your own pace, however this will only be while the chapter is active. If the chapter is not active, you're not going to be able to do them. When Stephen opened his journal, we got to see the other story arcs that were going on and you could see the phase timers which indicate how much real world time the chapter is going to be available for. You could also see what quests are linked to the story arc and you can pick the quest from a list as many of them are optional. Most of them will be hidden when you first accept the story arc. What quests are completed for that story arc on the whole server decide what is going to happen in the later phases of the story arc such as what quests will be available, what NPCs are available as helping one NPC can lock you out of helping different NPCs. Due to the environment changing so do the resources in the area and this activates rare resource spawners that will occur during certain events. One resource mentioned was like the corrupted soul bloom. Each story arc has its own special resource so it will be important to look out for these. So it really does even for PvPers incentivize going out doing the quest doing the PvE and getting involved in shit and I do think it's a good design plan or something they wanted to implement in the game or have implemented hopefully so far. We then got a brief overview of five statues that were five of the deans of the Mages University. The first ever dean of the university was Tenfilarus Rin and he was an elf that came over and built the Mages Tower and taught the first students. The next dean 
was his student Aris Todd, and he was the first human Dean after Tenfilarus went back to the elves. The third Dean talked about was Jenica. No one knows what happened to her, as she never died, she just disappeared one day as her expertise was teleportation. Then we had Darren Lamont, and his family is very central to the story arc for the Tower of Carthen. The final Dean mentioned was Klonzander, and his areas of expertise was alchemy. We saw lots of murals which showed the history of the world and also showed the three moons of Vera have five phases. Most story arcs do repeat like the Tower of Carthen. After they've been completed, they're going to cool down and then they will repeat again, so you have a chance to actually do them again and not always miss out on these things. For the big major world spanning story arcs, these won't repeat. When the branches of the story arc are decided through played interaction, they are canonised in the service history. However, you can replay them through a separate system, however, the decision and objectives you complete ain't gonna count towards your server canonised law. The Tower of Carthen is a large dungeon and it's the largest in the Riverlands and will be a major feature in Alpha 2. The story arc can end in two ways, either with a boss encounter at the top of the tower or with the boss encounter that is at the ground level in the supporting city. So what we got from that was a decent bit of information but mostly, let's be honest, we're not seeing Alpha 2 this year. It is a bit shit and I did expect it to come but it is what it is. You know, I'm not too bothered. You know, let them take the time to test stuff out. We should get spot testing end of the year and going into next year. I would probably say quarter two, quarter three earliest. We'll probably get Alpha 2. Now I'd like to say logically we could see Alpha 1 but I would honestly say the best way for everyone now is just push it back to the furthest day. Expect to see Alpha 2 halfway into next year or late next year and if we get it earlier, brilliant. Now if Steven starts saying stuff or the company starts suggesting dates or saying we're going to see certain things, I genuinely wouldn't even go off that. I wouldn't start presuming we're going to see it. I mean, I'll I'll give information in my videos and I'll make sure I'm giving out the information of what we're getting told, but I will probably be a bit more swaying on the later dates than anything, just to not get my hopes up because I really did convince myself with what Stephen was saying and obviously like he said he had hiccups and maybe said certain things he shouldn't have, that it was going to come earlier than it is. But I think in the long run, this is probably the best thing and overall it'll help the game, the development of the game and how Alpha 2 launches and runs and overall leads to a better end game product. And to finally round the video, I'll probably do another one covering the EMA and if you haven't seen that, I would check out the EMA. There's going to be a lot more Ashes content and I'm going to try and keep up as always with the monthly live streams and any content we get, I'll pump out. Obviously, it's quieting down now and there is an insane amount of information and like I said before, I don't just want to pump out content for views and likes and just do it for the sake of it. One, I do this for the channel and myself. Two, I do it for the guild and the community I'm growing so everyone's educated and knows what's going on and can keep up to date with everything because not everyone has time to read the stream or sometimes understands everything that's went on in the stream. And what I also will be doing for the channel is I'll be expanding out into the other games I talked about because this channel will main around two games which is Ashes of Creation and Arc 2 but now it'll be Arc Ascension being that that's going to be the new game and remaster of the game I'm playing. So there's going to be content and both of them so I'll definitely try and get involved. Drop a like, drop a comment, let me know what you want to see, let me know what you thought about this live stream. And as always I really do appreciate the likes, the views, giving it shares in other communities and if you want to get involved actively in a gaming community that's going to be based around these games feel free to join the discord and if i sound like death this week it's because i'm genuinely rough and quite ill i don't know what's up with us but i appreciate you watching the video as always and i'll catch you in the next one cheers